If you're a high school student and your dream is to study in Canada, keep watching this. If you are a bachelor student and your dream is to study in Canada, keep watching this. If you are a master student and your dream is to study in Canada, keep watching this. In this video, I am going to be talking to you about a prestigious, prestigious, prestigious scholarship. This is Canada's finest, okay? This is the Vanier Graduate Scholarship program okay this is like the top tier where we are talking about scholarships in Canada and what I'm going to be doing in this video of course we are going to look at the website because it's important then we are going to look at the past scholars because I've told you all already as someone who has gotten tons of scholarship I have a good feeling that in order to know how to get a scholarship look through those that have gotten the scholarship before and you are on your way to understanding how can you get the scholarship also in the other part of this video i was able to dig through dig through the internet and i found solid examples of how you can structure your application to the vanier graduate scholarship program i'm not going to be reading them word verbatim to you but i have all of them here so i'm just going to be picking parts of it and like summarizing it and giving it to you in a way where I hope that you can take it and then see how you structure your essays as you apply for the Vanier Graduate Scholarship Program. You're going to need a pen and paper, you guys. Get a pen and paper because in the last part of this video, we are going down to the nitty gritty of it. I was able to find those these examples, so I'm going to be giving them to you. You take notes and you use it when you apply for your scholarship. And in the last part of this video, we are going to answer some frequently asked questions about this particular scholarship. So if that sounds like something you're interested in grab your pen and paper and let us sit down and start work before we get right to it hello everybody thank you so much for stopping by my name is sylvie and in 2014 i got the max japanese government scholarship in 2016 i was the third runner up for the mandala washington fellowship in 2018 i received the yalla scholarship and in 2021 i received the clinton global initiative fellowship so if you're new here you are in in good hands welcome hit that subscribe icon turn the notifications on because I am going to be taking good care of you I'll be giving you all information about all the fully funded scholarships that you can apply for I couldn't study abroad without a fully funded scholarship so I'm passionate about fully funded scholarships and if you're an old person yeah hey what's up thank you so much for stopping by let me know in the comment section where are you all watching this from? Or if you just want to say, hi, Sylvie, how are you? And please hit that like icon because it helps this channel grow. You all definitely want to support this channel to grow, don't you? So yes, hit that like icon such that this video can be shown to so many more people, okay? Alrighty, so as I said already, I have tons of experience when it comes to scholarships. So as you follow through this video, if you have some questions, pause it, put them in the comment section. And I and all my experience, I'm going to be coming through to those comment section to answer all your questions. So without much further ado, let's get right down to it. And as I said, we are going to start with the website. Okay, so this is the website of the scholarship. I'm going to put the link to this uh, particular website in the comments, in the description box, such that you can go to it because this is where you start. I'm not going to be telling you all about how to apply for the scholarship, which is what I've been doing on this channel because over the years I've come to realize that y'all are smart enough. Y'all are smart enough when you come to this website, you look through, you have the next important dates, the eligibility, the nomination process, and it tells you about what to do next. Like you have here the application nomination process, the review process will result information for scholars. So all of you who are applying for this, y'all are smart. Come to this website, look through this. It's a step-by-step -step guide. You can go through it and this is what you're going to see. So now let's get to the second part of this video where I'm going to be talking to you or we all are going to be looking at the past scholars, those that have gotten the scholarship before. Because as I told you all already, my theory being in this scholarship space for a while is that if you want to see what it is that they are looking for in a candidate, then look through the past scholars. It's really the most recent past scholars because it gives you an idea of 
where is the where the scholarship providers where is their mindset in terms of choosing scholars and what first what can you learn from it and how can you take that information and prepare yourself to apply for this particular scholarship if you are a high school student this i'm showing you here the blueprints of what you should do if you hope to go study in Canada one day. If you are a bachelor student, I'm showing you here the blueprint of what you need to do right now to prepare yourself to go study in Canada one day. If you are a master student, the same thing. And if you are a PhD student who intends to still go to Canada and study, this is the blueprint. So let's look at the CVs of those that have gotten the scholarship before and see what can we learn from it and Right now as a student, what are the changes that you can do? What are some things that you can strategize and make yourself a stronger competitor when you apply for this particular scholarship? So let us start with our first. This is the first um, This is the first uh, CV that we are going to look at. This is by Matthew Robertson. By the way, all of this is public information. This is not me uh, looking through people's private data. This is all public information and it is here for we all to see, okay? For we all to see. So now let us start here. Uh, this is the CV, okay? So Matthew Robertson, let's look at the education. PhD, Fisheries and Science with a GPA of 4. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's four on four. Okay. <laughs> that, I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. That hit me hard. <laughs> that hit me hard because I'm like, oops. So you all, how is your GPA looking like? Because guess what? There are people here with a GPA of four. Okay. Well, this is... Because the Vanier Graduate uh, Canada Scholarship is for PhD students, this is what he got after he had gotten into the university. Let's look at what he had before he had his scholarship. This is be this is PhD. So what did he get before PhD? His master's 2016 to 2018, MSc in Oceanography, Coastal Studies, GPA of 4. GPA of 4. 4 on 4. Who gets a perfect GPA in his life? What? What? What were you doing in university? You're not having fun. Listen, I had fun in university. I had a good GPA, but I did not have four. Oh my goodness. You guys, if you want to get to, if you want to study in Canada for free, if you want to get your studies paid for, if you want to just show up and get a fully funded scholarship in Canada, guess what? Matthew Robinson tells us, you need to get a GPA of four. Four on four. I will not make it. <laughs> and then at his bachelor's, he had a GPA of 3.6. Nova Scotia, Canada in Halifax. Wow. Wow. And then his MSc, he did it in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In Louisiana in the States. Okay. Then he has publications. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight publications so he has eight publications so publications are important if you're thinking about if you're a bachelor student start prepping start prepping y'all are not too early to start doing uh, some kind of publication some written work start doing it uh, master students definitely get into the thick of it because this is what counts you see he has seven publications before he's applying for uh, maybe some of these uh, were written during his phd years but this is seven publications so Give and take, all right, he's doing good for himself. And then grants, he had one grant. Okay, that's, that's not a, we, we can do it, we can do it. One grant, we can do it. Honors and awards, he had first prize, undergraduate research science Atlantic. Then he had the Killam American Fund Scholarship, the George and Elizabeth Calendo Science Scholarship. Okay, he's had some scholarships, $500, $6,000, $4,000. What does that tell us? It tells us that it doesn't matter what, how small, whatever your scholarship that you got is, put it in your CV. Put it in your CV because it counts as an award that you got. It doesn't matter. This is $500. He has it in his CV. So put, don't take any of your small, small things that you get. In your, in, I remember when I was in school, I received the the best, the award for the be, third third prize for the best literature student. It was like the best art student. And it was like different books. 
and that till today that is not in my cv but when you see someone who receives an award for six five hundred dollars it's in their cv it is an award do not take any of your hours for granted put it all in your cv you guys and the workshops he's done one two three workshops let's get to the workshops let's attend them outreach one two three four five he's done five over the years work experience he's worked in different places he's still working now in biometric research and other things certifications and skills he has some certifications quantitative tools like mixed model random effects hierarchical models then another statistical thing what this tells us is that I've said it in other videos and I'm saying it again. It's extremely important that places like Coursera where they have like different certification programs, it's important that we all, uh, as a, someone who is prepping to uh, go study, take those certifications as long as they add something to your, to your, uh, to whatever it is that you're going to be studying, as long as it helps you build up your CV, take those certification courses. See here, he has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different, uh, certifications that he has taken and you put it all in your CV. Presentations, you guys, he's done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine presentations. I don't know how many of these were done during his PhD years and how many he had prior to applying for the Vanier Graduate uh, Scholarship Program. But you see that he has done presentations. So looking through his CV, what are the things that we are learning from here? Presentations at as your at your bachelor's master's level, go and attend whatever presentations are taking place in your school, left, right, center, go and attend. And when you attend, put it on your CV. Online courses, Coursera, MOOC, all of those courses, take them because it is important you are going to add it in your CV. If you have some working experience, throw it in there in matters and what are you doing for your community that is what he puts here as outreach anything that you're doing outside of the academic field it is important put it there and then he's attended some workshops teaching experience we've spoken about this if you are if you're a bachelor student start doing some go and tutor some high school students if you are a master student go and tutor some some bachelor students if you see some opportunities to do some teaching on campus do it if you don't see it ask your professors master students can you teach this particular course to undergraduate students do, do all of those things are going to add up towards getting you some kind of scholarships in the future and if you're thinking about studying in canada this is how this person did it so it is important now let's go to the next person this person's name is temitope tombi Onifade. i swear to you nigerians are going to kill me in the comment section because i don't know how to pronounce the names nigerians first of all i'm sorry and then y'all let me know in the comment section how do i pronounce this name y'all are seeing the name here temitope tombi ona oni fade I think. All right, let's get to it. What can we learn looking through the CV education? Doctor of Philosophy in Law at the University of British Columbia. Masters of Law in Energy and Environmental Law. Masters. Okay, he doesn't, uh, he or she doesn't have the GPAs here. So, okay, fine. Bachelor's, Master's, PhD. Is. He had a GPA of 3.6. Nova Scotia, Canada in Hull in Canada and then uh in Obafemi Awolowo University. Oh that one I pronounce it correctly. Obafemi Awolowo University. That one I know. Nigerians you cannot come for me. That one I know how to pronounce. The person has done some short programs, climate change here, Aboriginal relations there, special uh Institute for Human Rights, Energy Sector. Okay, some short programs, awards and honors that he selected. Top five article, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done some eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, interesting. Uh and the other awards, but tons of awards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 different awards, those count. Then professional awards, service awards, research interests, just like the, the title, substance, theory, and the research grants, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Research grants, okay, this is like how much uh, they've been given. Research contributions, one, two, three, four, five. These are the things that the person has like studied, uh, uh, like contributed in terms of publish publications, referred articles and chapters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, 
this is huge this is huge because um you first of all you need to you needed to have written an article for it to be, have been referred to so which means that the person has 13 publications but what i'm not too sure is were these publications done in his or her phd years or this is prior to getting the Vanier uh, Graduate Canada uh, Scholarship. That This part, I'm not too sure. But what that tells us also is that the publications matter. Publications matter if you're going to be applying for the Vanier Graduate uh, Scholarship Program. Right now, your bachelor's, master's, start publishing. And then, uh, no referred uh, articles and chapters, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, referred works, one, two, three, four, five. Conference procedures one, two, three, four, five. Conferences matter, and then policy papers. Oh wow, one, two, three, four, five. Probably it reference to their job, what they are doing. Opets and blocks, essay competition, editing and references, conference and lectures, invited conferences. Conferences, you guys. Conferences are where it's at because the good thing with conferences is that. Uh, instead of cold emailing professors, you are able to meet some professors there, speak to them, see what they are doing, what they are interested in. You can get to start forming some really good relations there. And it's also good because it adds up to your CV. You put it there in your CV of these are the academic things I've done. I've gone for this conference, this conference, this conference. All of those things matter, okay? So conference is one of those things that you never lose with it. You just win. It's a win-win thing regardless. You see the number of conferences and then competitive conferences 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Wow. Organized conference 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Expert guest lectures 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Career development guest lectures 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Whew. Community performances, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Audio, 1, 2, 3, 4, wow. And then work experience, it, it goes on. Research, research, whoa, 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 whoa. And then service selected. Whoa! 17 pages on somebody's CV. We cannot compete. <laughs> we cannot com We cannot compete, you guys. This is just an outstanding candidate. Just outstanding. But the thing that it's still I still don't have an answer to the question is when were all of these things done? Were this done prior to them being selected for the Vanier graduate or for the Vanier graduate? What do I pronounce this wrong? Vanier Canada graduate scholarships. Was it done before, during, or after? Right? So even if they were done after, it cannot be like this much. There already must have been some of those things prior to them getting chosen for this particular scholarship. So you guys, you see the topics, lecturing, teaching, conferences. Here we don't see, uh, I didn't see any, uh, just our ref, uh, uh, journals, referred and non referred journals. Not necessarily book chapters and manuscripts, nothing here with reference to that. And then different awards and then working experience. All of those things matter if you are going to be getting that scholarship. Mentoring, do as much as possible. And also courses, different kinds of certifications that you can get do as much as possible and use that when you up when you put it in your cv because all of those is going to count when it's time for you to apply for your canada vanier graduate scholarships how is this looking like are you, uh, is this helping you all if it is please drop some comments in the comment section and also please like the video because that helps to show the video to so many more people and now we are going to get into the juicy part i told you all that i went digging i went digging this is the interesting part here because i went digging just to find out like yes i know that you all have to write some essays when you apply to the vanier uh, canada graduate scholarship but what what should these essays look like what are the things that we should be putting and not putting and i found some things that i'm going to be sharing with you all get a pen and a paper this gets excited i'm getting my lap my ipad out of the way because we all have to get into this okay 
So the first thing that uh, you all will have to do, you have to write your research proposal because that is extremely important. So in your research proposal, based on the things that I have seen, when you start your first paragraph, just first of all, state how important whatever research it is, whatever field you're doing, how important is it? That is extremely important. And then in your second paragraph, where is the research gap? In these studies that you're doing, you've done a lot of research, what are the things that are missing? What is it that is missing? What is lagging behind? What, what is missing? State it out there. What is missing in the current state of the research? And if you can, show examples of things that are missing, okay? And after you have done that, now say, what is the thing that I am going to be doing? This is the thing that is important. This part of research is important. But although this is important, see, this is what is missing. Then you point out what is missing. And then you now say that this is what I am going to be studying. My study is going to be filling this gap by doing this, doing this, doing this, doing that. That already tells you the three paragraphs. This is the importance of the thing what is missing and how you are going to be filling up that gap of what is missing let me fix those lights in. what is good okay now that is better now the lighting is okay so that is the first thing that is what you need to write in your research proposal okay and then of course you have to put through all your references because in order to come up with a conclusion like this is what is missing you need to be referring you need to have read long and wide to be able to figure out what is it that is missing so you put all of those things there and then another thing that is important that you have to do is you have to write about your research contributions what are the things that what are the things in your research what are the things that you have done so far to contribute to research that is why we're talking about even though you're a bachelor's student even though you're a master's student get into like various writing cohorts be a part of different things what writing things have you done be a part of all of those things because now when you have to come to write about your research contributions especially if you contribute to a paper talk about that paper in this 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 year i contributed this to this paper this was the title of the paper it was published in this particular journal even if it's a school magazine it was published here this is what it was about this is what my role was there and everything go to the next one write it that is your contrib doing uh, contributions towards research write about it state it when was it done what what was the topic of it who are the other participants of it Put it all in there. That is your contribution to research. So you have your research proposal. You have your contribution to research there. The other thing that is extremely important that you have to do is you have to show your plan for the future. You have Remember in your research proposal, you have already stated the state of the art, what is missing and what your contribution is going to be. Then now pull through that thing that you said that your research is going to be how does that tie to what you'll be doing in future what what is it that you want to do from that research when you pull out that research what are you going to be doing point it out give examples of how it is important and what you are going to be doing with it okay and then the last thing that is important is the leadership statement and sometimes we can get caught up in oh my goodness i've not done a lot of leadership things i'm lost i don't know what to do but with this part you can just state year to year at the age of this i did this at this other age i did this at this other age i did this or when i was in high school i did this and then when i was in bachelor's i did this when i was in my master's i did this if you have not done any of those things start Start doing it right now. If you're a high school student watching this video, start doing it right now because that is going to contribute to your leadership potential and show what you've been doing when you write your application for it. Master students, if you have not done it, start it. Bachelor, start it. Because that is the blueprint of what is going to be needed when you write your leadership essay for the Vanier Graduate Scholarship Program. Now let's get to the last part of it. This video is getting too long. I'm not going to go through all of these frequently asked questions. What is the monetary award for each scholarship? 50,000 Canadian dollars is going to be given. Who is responsible for delivering the 
Canada uh, Vanier Graduate Scholarship. There are three places that are important. The Social Sciences and Re uh, Humanities Research Council, the Natural Science and Engineering Council, and then the Canadian Institute for Health Research. Those are the three people that are in charge of the Vanier Graduate Scholarship Program, okay? Those are the three main people. And then what is the nomination process? First, the nominating, uh, the nominating university approaches candidates. Nominees and the, no and the nominating university completes the nomination forms. Then there's a multidisciplinary peer review of like 70 nomination agencies. Then there's an inter-agency -in selection board. All nominees are notified by the council. And then the Canadian nominees who are not selected for the scholarship are forwarded to the whatever. What is the nomination process? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to cut this part out. All right. And then what universities are eligible to hold an award? There are different participating universities. Make sure that, and all only the participating universities can nominate a candidate. Make sure yours is there. And then what is the appeal for studying in Canada? Well, Canada is friendly. There are in multicultural many people they're bilingual okay they have invested in education so you can go study there and then our vanier uh at the vanier canada graduate scholarship opens canadian and international students yes you all can apply for it and then do we have the is it for domestic international students yes you all can apply for it and what is the academic uh what is it uh Evaluation criteria, past academic results, and then the program that you want to study, how original it is, then the relevant professional and academic experience, two written evaluations are important, and then the institutional award that is important. Okay, so we've gone through it. We, I hope that you are able to learn a thing or two, how you're going to prepare yourself to get a fully funded scholarship to Canada. This is an evergreen video, so it doesn't matter when you fall on it, when you're watching. You can use this information to prepare yourself to get a scholarship. High school students, this is important for you. Bachelor students, is important. Master students, is important. And PhD students, it's extremely important for you all i hope that you all were able to learn a thing or two from this i'm going to see you all in the next video cheers